it is clear that linguistic relativity as a theory has amassed not only supporters, but also skeptics. Historically, it's, it's a bit of a drama. The owner of the voice you've just heard is Guillaume Thierry. He is a leading scientist in the field of linguistic relativity. Working from Bangor, Wales, he and his team have conducted extensive research and empirical studies on this topic. He will guide us through today's episode, touching on intricacies only a professional in the field would be credible enough to touch. Normally, in science or in, in all domains of academy and academia, you have a, a kind of dialogue between people, proponent of a theory or a proposal, and the people who criticize it, or on the contrary, who accept it. And there is this kind of two-way discussion all the time between people offering some evidence and people either accepting it or declining it and, and offering sometimes some counter evidence, right? This is a dialogue. It's very important in science, this. It basically makes it possible for people to adjust their thinking and make their theory evolve as new evidence appear. But the problem is that uh, this never happened for linguistic relativity. It's important to know that Benjamin Leeworth died uh, of cancer at the age of 44 in 1941. Very early, very, very young actually. And his theory was, was barely formulated. It was not even that precise. He had some examples. He had some uh, theory about the Hopi language and about Eskimo or Inuit uh, uses of terms for snow and so on, famous things. He had developed some argumentations. He had pushed some very, very well written, actually, uh, ideas, but he didn't really have a corpus of data or evidence, uh, if you want academic evidence to provide. And that was only published 15 years after he died. Now, you can imagine that someone who, somebody's hypothesis, which actually never existed while, it, while she was alive as the sapir worth hypothesis, uh, you know, Somebody who, who died 15 years before a good comprehensive account of the theory was published is not in a position to respond to any criticism or to argue back anything. They are just completely silent. The only thing that stands is that kind of statement that was made at a, at a particular point in time. Now, you might say, oh, well, his mentor, Edward Sapir, who's a remarkable uh, linguist and, and one of the greatest linguist of the 20th century who took this forward. Well, unfortunately, uh, not at all, because his mentor died two years before him at the age of 56, which is not much older, right? And so if you consider that these two guys who had this uh, profound intuition and some ideas that were revolutionary for the time, both died within two years of each other quite young without having been able to formulate and publish their theory well, there is this fracture here of time of the academic dialogue. There is no option for the people to adjust or to make their idea evolve when everything stops. And today, it seems, the controversy persists, with academia being split into two teams. The first team is the, the believers, I'd like to call them, or the, the theoreticians, or the linguists, the strongly anchored linguists. Now, linguists, will argue that uh, linguistic relativity um, is a joke, basically. That's the argument. What is remarkable here is that they virtually never provide any evidence of any kind. They just tell you what they think. That's the first camp. The people who tell you what theoretically is or isn't based on their intuition, their profound intuition about language and thought. And then you have the second group, who are people who are gradually less linguistic and more psychological as we go over time, who are interested in testing directly in the laboratory whether there's an effect of language and thought. And that's the fracture you have. These two camps don't really talk to each other. And there's a good reason for that. They don't have anything to say to each other. One operates on intuition, the other one on evidence. We asked Guillaume, how credible does he think Sapir-Whorf theory really is? I think it is credible because I find myself convinced through masses of experiments that it is. But um, what's interesting in my case is that I come from the situation where I didn't believe in this. Interestingly, I was very much impressed and in favor of the first group early on in my career when I didn't get any interest into that topic. 
But then, as I met a, a very good colleague of mine, Panos Athanasopoulos, who's in Lancaster University, we started looking into it. And I discovered that uh, we could actually do some pretty well-designed, rigorous scientific experiments to test the question or the hypothesis. And to my great surprise, the results were positive. And it happened once, it happened second time, it happened three, four, five, six times. And after six times in different domains with different topics, color, shape, motion perception, time perception and time conceptualization, I became gradually convinced that actually, you know what? It probably is true, or at least there is good evidence for it. As you might have noticed, Guillaume is not exactly an impartial observer when it comes to these topics. He is clearly in one of the camps he himself has described. In fact, the split is so pronounced that it is hard to find any professional that is not. For us, as non-professionals trying to understand how credible sapir whorf hypothesis is, this might be a bit annoying. Guillaume being a researcher on the topic, conducting his own experiments says, I don't know, but my experience in the field says it might be credible. If I were talking to a linguist theoretician, however, they might tell me it lacks credibility. But sometimes this ambiguity is the best we can do. Maybe it will one day spawn constructive scientific debate between those two teams. Again, in the words of Guillaume, Controversy is good in science, it's not bad, it's a good thing. Controversy means progress. If there's no controversy, there is no business. If you all agree, let's not test anything. 